Hi, it's Whitney, aka Shapespeare, and I'm talking about how to level the base of an object that you've scanned to get it ready to print. As we know, you have to have a nice flat base on an object in order to have something for it to rest on the build plate with. Either that or printed on a whole bunch of support. So in this case, we're talking about a giant 3D Oreo that I scanned from an actual Oreo using photogrammetry. If you're interested, you can download the original on uh, Umagine, and it's also available on Thingiverse. Just search for Giant Oreo. It's the only one. Now, here is the original scan. The version you download is, is nicely cleaned up, so you don't have to go through any of this. Um, if we look at it closely, we notice that it's not sitting flat on the build plate. So if we tried to print it right now, We'd either have to fill all of this area here with support material, which would greatly lengthen the build time and make the bottom of it kind of yucky after we stripped all the support off. Um, or we can figure out some way to get it flat on the build plate, which is a much better solution. So in order to do that, first I'm going to hit 5 to go out of perspective mode into ortho mode so I know that I'm looking exactly straight at things without the perspective getting in the way. If I hit 1, that takes me to my front view. Now from this position, hit R, and that puts you in rotate mode. You're rotating uh, perpendicular to the plane that you're, you're viewing, in this case from the front. Straighten out as best as you can. Now obviously you can't get it completely straight there because we're just looking at it from one direction. If we hit 3, that gives us a side view. Hit R again, and get it a little bit straighter like that. Now if we look closely at it, we can see we're still not exactly flat, but if we go back to 1, we sort of sneak up on flat this way. Now that looks pretty good, okay? But looking at it, you can see, we'll go a little bit a little bit back uh, this way. There we go. So looking at it, you can see the base isn't flat because it's a scan. There's all kinds of garbage on the base that is going to interfere with trying to print it. If we put this into slicer software right now, it would take the lowest point of the base, which is this little nub that's sticking out here, and it would rest that on the build plate and then if we had support turned on, it would fill the whole rest of it with support. If we didn't have support turned on, the build would just fail because you'd be trying to print that on the build plate and everything else up here you'd be trying to print in space. And you'd end up printing a gigantic printer full of spaghetti, which is nobody's idea of a good time. So what we're going to do with this here is going to flatten out that build, the base plate, so that it'll build nicely. Okay? So, two ways we can go about doing that. First, let's get ourselves a reference plane. Just going to hit the plane tool and set a radius of eh, 100, maybe 50. We don't need it to be that big. Whoops. There we go. Okay. That gives us, if we zoom back a little bit, that gives us a reference that's a dead flat plane that we can see looking at the bottom, how much of our object is sticking through that, okay? The first thing this, this tells us is that we're not entirely as level as we could be. So if we hit 3, again, to get into the side view and then just tilt it down a little bit, we can see that one half of our, our object is sticking down through this plane, the other half is not, which means that we're not flat. Um, so, in this case, we're going to start rotating it slightly differently. Um, if you notice the red axis here, that is your X axis. If we hit R, X, that allows us to rotate through the X axis without um, having to be aligned with it. So we just want to turn this till we get the most of it we can see flat. And that's pretty good like that. Now let's hit our Y and rotate it in the Y axis. And we want to get it as even as we can with like that. There you go. So now you see there's an even amount of it sticking down through 
the reference plane. So that tells us that that is, is pretty well as, as good as we're going to get for level. Now we are going to have to trim some of this, well, at least the first, first way we're going to do it is by trimming the stuff that sticks to the build plate. So let's uh, adjust it so that as little as possible is trimming, is uh, sticking through the build plate because the build plate is going to be the, what we're going to use to cut off the material. So that looks pretty good. Um, if you want to be a little bit more accurate about it than clicking and dragging, if you go up to here to the location, transform the Z axis, and you can nudge it just tiny little bits by uh, clicking those arrows. So the idea is the first point where we have everything, see here, we're missing a little bit up here. But if we click it one more time, bring it down just a little bit more, just a smidgen, there we go. Now we have the whole object is under the under the build uh, reference plane there. So we're going to use a Boolean modifier to cut it off. I like to set it up like this so I can see it happen. Um, and while we're at that, we'll hide the reference plane. It's not, it won't be very, very dramatic to see, but uh, let's Make sure you're selecting the Oreo that you actually want to be modifying. Get the modifier menu, select Boolean. And I have another couple of videos about using Booleans if you've not used them before. They can be a little quirky sometimes, so you can check those out. Um, we're going to say difference between the Oreo and plane 01. Okay, now that's a good time to go out and get a snack or go to the bathroom or go watch a movie, <laughs> depending on how fast or slow your computer is. Mine's pretty fast, so I only time-lapsed uh, about 10 or 20 seconds there. Um, but as you can see, we've now cut the bottom of our, our Oreo off flat with that plane. So it is now, if we go into front view, you'll see it's uh, absolutely flat across that, that plane. Um, and it will be, you know, good for, for printing. Um, and then we would just apply that modifier and then export as an STL, and you know it'll sit flat on the axis. But there's another way to do it. Sometimes, depending on the nature of your, of your mesh, uh, um, Blender may not let you do a Boolean. Um, if your mesh is really complicated and has, you know, some degeneracies in it, has some overlapping faces or some holes, um, which, you know, that happens with, with scans all the time, you may, may or may not be able to do a Boolean with, with Blender. Um, sometimes it's just not worth the, the hassle of, of, you know, trying to fight Blender to get you to do a Boolean. So another way to do it, and sometimes it's even faster, a little easier, if we go into uh, edit mode here. Now we want to hit Z, which turns us into wireframe mode. Um, the reason why we want wireframe mode is because it allows us to select all the way through the object. If we didn't have wireframe mode on, we would only be selecting faces that we can see, and that wouldn't get all of the faces we need to select. So from here, uh, we hit B to get our box select. And then the idea is to just drag that around and just select the very bottom most parts of the object that we can. Again, we're trying to get sort of the lowest little shaving that, that gives us all of the, the information there so we're not missing any parts, um, but we don't want to cut off any more of our delicious Oreo than we need to. Okay, so if we look, there's a lot of uh, big facets on the bottom, so you, in this, uh, there, we'll go into face selection mode and you'll be able to see them. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so basically we've got the bottom part selected there we go. Okay, so now you can see better what we're uh, what we're dealing with here. You can see we're missing a couple of of 
pieces here. We haven't selected those. So we've got to go back and take a slightly bigger bite and the box select. We're going to bring our box up just a little bit higher to make sure that we've got, we get those objects too. Come out of wireframe mode and let's see if, uh, make sure we've got them all. There we go. Looks like we've got all of those, those faces selected. Um, okay. Then uh, it's easiest to see if you're in straight ahead view looking straight on it. Very simple. You hit S for scale, Z for Z axis, and zero. And it takes all of the selected points and scales them to zero, which means it takes sort of the average of the highest and the lowest and pushes them all to that point. And you can see the effect here. We have to hit enter to commit the action. The effect here is to flatten the bottom of our object. So we still have all of the geometry. We still have all of the, uh, the uh, faces that we had before. It's just all squished flat. And you'll notice around the edge here, there are some little artifacts here. Um, let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. You can see there are little artifacts here of where we stretched it down. You won't notice those on the print. Um, they're they're so, so small compared to the overall size of the object. Um, so it's another good uh, tip to have, you know, another trick to, to have in your bag of, of tricks to deal with, um, you know, really messy models and scans like this. And sometimes you find uh, an object that somebody has uploaded on Thingiverse that for whatever reason, uh, you know, has a, a few little outlying little parts that make it not sit flat on the build plate. Um, so this is a useful trick to uh, to get rid of those and to get everything sitting flat and printing nicely. So uh, we talked about this on uh, the 3D Printing Today podcast. If you guys are interested in, in checking that out, it's available on iTunes and uh, Stitcher Radio. Um, so uh, keep listening to the podcast and keep watching the YouTube videos. Thank you.